Tonight, ABC 57 continues our investigative series called The Cost of COVID-19. Part 3 takes a closer look at the unseen costs in adults like struggles with addiction and mental health. Experts say the most vulnerable population are people who may have never struggled with mental health before. Tonight, I bring you one local man's story in his fight to get help. I'm just jacked all of them. To his friends and family, 75-year-old Michiana native Jack Gibbony is kind and caring. But dive deeper in a man you might not expect to struggle with mental health openly does. A lot of people, including me at one time, don't realize they're depressed. They're thinking, well, I'm having a bad day today. Everybody has a bad day. One bad day turned to many. And now Jack is sharing his struggles, hoping folks will understand it's okay to get help. I have experience in being depressed, and that's not the kind of experience one wants. Mental health experts believe the rise in mental health issues and new patients dealing with problems for the very first time can be directly contributed to COVID-19 and what's necessary to keep the disease away. Words like quarantining, social distancing, and working from home have dominated 2020. Precautions that are necessary to prevent the spread, but actions that are also hurting our mental health. We knew when the pandemic hit, it, it is a recipe for disaster um, in regards to mental health and addiction recovery. John Gallagher is an addiction therapist over at Oaklawn and Basher Children's Home. He tells me as of mid-July, more than half of Americans, 53%, believe the pandemic has had a negative impact on their lives. And some of the most concrete negative consequences we've experienced is that there has been an increase in overdose deaths related to drug and alcohol abuse, and then there's been an increase in suicide. Uh, and this is something that is uh, national that we're experiencing, but it's something that we've been experiencing in our community. Jack's recovery was considered successful. He was sober for six years, retired for 12, and donating his free time to the local food bank until the pandemic hit. I wasn't allowed to go to the food bank at the advice of my doctors. I couldn't go out to restaurants. Basically, I had to stay home and sit and look out the window. That really got to me. After days of loneliness at home, Jack started drinking again. I started cheating again, meaning falling off the wagon. And uh, it was noticeable by my family, my friends, and I knew I was in trouble. So Jack took action, first speaking to his therapist by phone and eventually doing group sessions. A few weeks ago, members of the group positive for COVID-19. Jack decided to stop going, hoping to keep his risk of getting coronavirus at a minimum, but also trying not to risk making his mental health worse. I literally would sit in my living room, staring out the window, thinking. For some people, that feeling doesn't stop with thinking. Mental health experts believe that folks could start behaving in a worse way. That population is most at risk for suicide and drug overdose and death. So how do we fix it? Gallagher and Oaklawn believe we can start with how things are worded during the pandemic. I propose that we change the language from social distancing to, to what I see as more factual. What we are talking about is physically distancing. The last message we want to send people is to socially distance themselves. Because from a mental health standpoint, from a mental health recovery standpoint, we want people to be social, particularly during this devastating time. He also believes technology is a game changer in how patients could be treated. The most recent advance is telemedicine. It's a way for patients to video chat with their doctors, but experts say it does have some downfalls. I have noticed in my experience a higher number of patients discontinuing attendance at treatment. But Oaklawn has noticed more folks are opting for this method because they can talk with someone face to face, even if it's virtual. I've had friends of mine even say to me, you're different. What, what, what are you doing? What's different? And I'll say, well, you know, I'm going through therapy. Jack is still on his road to recovery, a tough road.
but he hopes sharing his decades of experience will be a wake-up call for anyone dealing with addiction. I do not hide the fact that I'm being treated uh, because it gives me some more accountability. And will I fall off the wagon again? I can't make any promises. Uh, I'm, if I do, I'll get back up and get on it again. And uh, that's what people need to do. It's treatable and you can overcome it. Whether you have or haven't been diagnosed before, Gallagher and Jack want you to know you're not alone and there are resources right here in the Michiana area. You can visit oaklawn.org for more information on mental health and addiction services or call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 800-273-8255. Here at ABC 57, we are trying to help solve the tough problems impacting your life. So if you have a story you want investigated, please email me at 57investigates at abc57.com. Or you can fill out the form on our website to submit a tip.